Hi, this is Tony Preston. I'm here today to help you with palpation, especially if you're getting ready for um, SBS weekend. You'll need a real person to work with. You should go through these palpation exercises on uh, different people as it'll be helpful to see the differences in craniums and how they're shaped and how they move. Um, you'll need a reference. Um, you can use your integrative craniosacral manual. Um, it has a section on the overview of physiology that talks about uh, how craniosacral motion occurs and uh, has these, illustra these illustrations here to show you what happens internally with the bones and what grossly happens on the outside of the cranium. It also has um, detailed information about the physiology of flexion, what happens in general with the vault and what happens with each bone, uh, sphenoid, the occipital bone, the temporal bone, parietal bone, etc. on through the entire cranium. As you're going uh, through this exercise you're going to notice that there are um, irregularities from side to side or front to back and so this section of your book on patterns goes through and talks about uh, different patterns in the cranial uh, craniosacral system here it shows flexion and extension here it shows vertical strain where the cranium moves differently from front to back here it shows torsion strain where one side externally rotates better and the other side internally rotates better on with side bending lateral strain etc um, if you happen to notice differences from side to side and that sort of stuff this information is useful for you um, it is not where you want to go in the beginning in the beginning you want to start out with feeling this basic motion and feeling as much of these detailed motions in each one of the bones as you can. Take your book and set it aside on a stool somewhere um, and get yourself a real person. Uh, have that person lay face up. Um, place their head in your hand. What you would want is that um, this EOP here on the cranium fits into these knuckles here on your hand so when I'm trying to palpate craniosacral rhythm and uh, I'm having any sort of difficulty I get focused on the movement of that EOP on my knuckles. What I'll often do is try to figure out exactly where it is on my knuckles, what part of the knuckle it's laying on um, where it's exactly applying pressure and when that happens I'll begin to see that the pressure changes so that that EOP will rotate toward the feet and then come back and pause and then rotate toward the top of the head and then come back and pause rotate into flexion midpoint extension midpoint flexion midpoint extension of course happening much more slowly than that Take time to pause the video at this point and feel for that motion. Separate it from that person's breathing. Notice that the breathing will happen at a different rate than the movement of this EOP. Once you've done that, place a hand here on the parietal bones. If you'll move it a little more posterior to uh, the wide portion of the parietal bones, you'll get a little more pronounced movement. At that point, you want to feel for the widening and narrowing of the cranium. Don't worry about your other hand so much at this point. Just focus on what's happening in this upper hand on the parietal bones. You'll notice that the cranium will widen and that it will become more narrow and widen and become more narrow. Pause the video and wait for that to happen. Okay. Now that you've felt that happen, notice that this parietal bone actually widens as the EOP rotates inferiorly and then rotates in as the EOP rotates superiorly. So I kind of have this motion happening where if I've got the occiput and the parietal here that the occiput rotates inferiorly as the parietal rotates out and the occiput rotates superiorly as the parietal rotates in. So while I've got my hands here, I'm feeling those two things happen together. Okay. 
Now that you've taken the time to feel those two things happen together, look at something else. Look at the fact that when this parietal rotates out, that this lateral angle here in these fingers rotates out as well. So the whole head becomes wider on this side and then rotates back in. So this lateral angle movement happening pressing on your fingertips and the pad of your thumb is more subtle than this parietal movement. Get the parietal movement first, coordinate it with the movement of the OP, and then feel these pieces happen together. If you want to get a little more subtle feel for the rise and fall of the sagittal suture. As this rotates out, this sagittal suture will drop. And as it rotates in, the sagittal suture will move superiorly. Now that you've felt that, move your hand here. Um, in all of these movements, um, your contact should be just enough to where you feel like you're going to uh, go through the skin, uh, feel through the skin enough where you're contacting the bone, but that you're not really pressing into the bone. If you try to maintain that level of contact, um, you'll notice that you have to adjust your hand a little bit in order to accommodate the movement of the craniosacral system. Lay your hand here and get that same contact. It's particularly important here. I don't want to take this frontal bone and really press it down into the head. I just want to lay it on top. What I'm going to feel at that point is that as the EOP rotates this way, the frontal bone will drop and the cranium will rock widen. So I've got, you know, this sort of motion happening and this and this and this. Okay. At the, at the time that this drops, the sphenoid also rotates forward. So we're talking about SBS motion today. Um, and the SBS is this joint between the sphenoid and the occiput. Okay. So I'm talking about that sphenobasilar synchondrosis, SBS, and how it's moving up and down and up and down. And as it goes into flexion, the SBS rises the sphenoid and occiput rotate a little inferiorly and the whole head widens. And then the SBS moves inferiorly, the sphenoid wings and the lateral angles of the occiput move superiorly and the head becomes narrower. So now if I lay my hand on the cranium I should feel this motion happening. Back to our person. So now I've got my hands here. I should feel that this sphenoid kind of rotating this way and becoming a little wider and then rotating back and becoming a little narrower as the occiput rotates this way and becomes a little wider and then rotates this way and becomes a little narrower. So I've got my hands here in this position and take the time to settle at this point. Pause the video, barely touch the head so that you're passing through the skin and contacting the bone but not pressing into the bone and feel for this motion to be happening in your hands. That motion is important um, for, uh, for doing craniosacral therapy well. Um, if you want to feel a few other things, you can feel here uh, at this mastoid process. As the cranium rotates out, that mastoid process will, the temporal bone will drop out and that mastoid process will drop inferiorly at the same time. Um, you can feel as these sphenoid wings go forward and rotate out, they'll push these zygomas down and out. Um, that's about enough for today. Take the time to feel those motions on multiple people um, and get, uh, get familiar with how this entire mechanism moves.